In the last demo, we created our Microsoft Teams app project and configured it for single sign-on so that we can leverage Microsoft Graph uh, using single sign-on. Now I'm gonna update Microsoft Teams app to support, uh, add support for submitting requests to Microsoft Graph by building off the SSO support that we currently have in place. Now, when you submit a request to Microsoft Graph, I have to include an OAuth access token in the header of every request. This isn't the same ID token that Teams previously received uh, from Azure AD um, as part of its SSO support, but that same ID token can be used to obtain an access token for use with Microsoft Graph. I'm gonna do this by implementing the OAuth2 on behalf of Flow. This is also referred to as the OBO Flow. But I can't do this client side. I have to do this server side. So there's a few things we need to have in place. First of all, one of the things I need to do is I'm gonna to need to add a list of all of our permissions that our application is going to need. So if you recall, if I go back and take a look at our app in Azure AD, you remember that we have a handful of permissions that are listed for email, uh, a couple uh, open, um, open ID permissions, as well as a Microsoft Graph permission of user.read. What I need to do is I'm gonna go into our env environment settings and I'm gonna add a new entry here for a list of all of the scopes uh, that we could use. Now this is gonna be a space delimited list because I'm gonna to have to make a demand for all the permissions that my access token is going to need. So for us, that's HTTPS graph.microsoft.com slash user.read. It's also the email, the open ID, the profile, and offline access permission. So we'll use that in a minute. Now the next step is I need to update my server side API to add support for using the ID token obtained from Microsoft Teams and use that to trigger and implement the OBO, access to uh, OBO flow to obtain an access token that I can then use to call Microsoft Graph. Remember, I can't do this client side. The OBO flow has to be implemented server side. So if I come over here, I know I'm gonna need a new dependency. Now one dependency is already in my project called JWD decode. That's gonna be used to read and extract information uh, from the ID token that's provided. I'm gonna need another uh, thing though. Let me go ahead and shut our, our Ingrox server down. I'm gonna need another tool called Axios. This is gonna be used to submit requests uh, HTTP requests, the sim same way that we use like fetch to do that uh, client side. We need something to do that server side. Now let's go implement the server side API. So I'm gonna come over here to server.ts and I'm gonna add a couple import statements to this. I'm gonna first do an import of JWT decode from JWT decode. And then I'm also going to do an import of Axios and then also the Axios request or response from Axios. Now I need to add a route that's gonna take the SSO ID token from the request and submit it uh, as a request to Azure AD using the OBO flow to exchange it for an OAuth access token that I can use to authenticate requests to Microsoft Graph. So I'm gonna go scroll down a little bit. I wanna find in this, in this uh, file where I'm setting the port right before I start the web server. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste in a bunch of code. Let me explain what this does. So what this code does is this is looking for a request that comes in, an HTTP GET request that comes in to exchange SSO token for OBO token. So what this will do is it's going to um, fetch the app ID and the app secret from our environment variables. And then it's going to fetch the SSO token from the query string uh, on the request. It then builds up the endpoint that we're gonna send, uh, the request that we're gonna obtain uh, an access token from Azure AD. And notice that I'm using the JWD decode uh, uh, package that I just referenced earlier to process that SSO token and pull out the, uh, the tenant ID uh, for the ID token. I'm then gonna build up the body of the request. This is all the standard stuff that we normally have to use for our, uh, to, to implement the OBO token uh, or the OBO request. Notice that we have a client ID or client secret in the SSO token. We fetched all of those things 
uh, from our environment variables and from the token that's coming in the HTTP request. We're implementing the on behalf of flow, and then we're also defining all of the permissions that our access token needs uh, when it's uh, issuing this request. So that's what it's requesting from Azure AD. I'm then gonna convert all those parameters to a URL encoded form body payload. Uh, and then I'm gonna build up our request headers. And then finally, I'm gonna submit the request. So I'm gonna submit the request as a HTTP post. I'm gonna, when I get a 200 back, I'm simply gonna return the response back of the data back to the requester, uh, which is going to be my Teams tab. The data that's coming back, you're gonna see in a minute, that's gonna contain the access token that we need. I also have a bunch of other error handling stuff that you see here that isn't really something we're gonna cover in this demo, but that's just stuff that you should take a look at uh, when you're working on a production app and things you should take into account. 